What's up everyone, I'm Easton Groves and welcome to the end of week 13. Now, last video, during the beginning of week 13, I asked y'all, what should I do to support these uh, girls? And one of y'all actually came up with the idea of making a support, uh, some kind of support brace to go around it. Well, this is what I did instead. I didn't have time to video this because this was a last minute uh, project for me, but I made myself an outdoor scrog screen with just the donuts triploid. This is one plant under this scrog screen. So now that in my area, it's gonna be starting, these girls will start flowering here in the next week or two. This girl will be fully supported and I don't have to worry about any branches breaking. Plus, I'll have more room to go up if I need to add a second or third tier of trellis. But this is my outdoor scrog screen. So the posts holding it up are four by fours and then you just have two by fours. The two by four I do have set at a height of three and a half feet. So that was the that was the maximum height I could set to bend this girl over before branches started to break. So I didn't want to break any branches. But I do have everything laid underneath. So like I said, I like I said in the last video, I've been watching a lot of Northern Scrogger. So we'll see what happens. I know one of y'all mentioned that these girls were stuck in reveg, and they're actually not. These girls are out of reveg, and you can tell that they're out of reveg because, yes, they still have their single blade fan leaves from when they were, were revegging. But if you come to the top of some of these colas, you'll start seeing that they've got three, four, five blade fan leaves. That's an indication that you're out of uh, reveg. If you were still in reveg, you would only, I would only have nothing but single blade uh, leaves right here. So like this one right here at the top, you've got a five blade leaf there, another one here. So this finally out of reveg. They've been out of reveg for a couple weeks now, so it's not a big deal. But I'm just gonna let these girls perk back up, giving them some water right now. And we'll see how this one looks in two weeks. All right. I see you. And this is the Skywalker. And look at that. And I gotta go through here because I still have some leaves and stuff that are dead. I got some branches in here to trim off before it starts budding because I don't want any of this in there that could potentially cause bud rot. So all that right there needs to be removed. I got some stuff right up here in the upper portion that just leaves that are not getting any sun. And they're just dying off. Yeah, it looks like that might be a little bit of powdery mildew. It has been really rainy and humid here. So it wouldn't surprise me if it was a little bit of powdery mildew. But I've been using my Crop Defender and Crop Defender fights against powdery mildew, white flies, uh, bud rot, you name it aphids it does it all and one of y'all recommended lost coast therapy well i looked at lost coast therapy and the crop defender that i've been using and it's the exact same stuff same ingredients same amounts so i got plenty of crop defender left so i'm going to finish off my crop defender before i switch to something else just to give it a shot yeah this is a skywalker og i mean she's looking really really good and here's that Gorilla Glue right there. Not doing much, but this one was more so, this one is more so like a little gimmick grow because this came from a Herm seed. So my Gorilla Glue uh, season, I did have a couple seeds in the bud, so I decided to grow one of the seeds out, see how it does. So far it's looking really good, but it was just recently transplanted into a three gallon pot. So she's still trying to have room to spread her roots out. But other than that, if it doesn't harm, I'm gonna have some more Gorilla Glue. Or supposable Gorilla Glue. I don't know, it came from ILGM, so who knows what it is. But this, this is gonna be one hell of a grow for this donuts. I know some of y'all are saying, hey, it harms, it harms, cut it down, cut it down. Well, this is an experiment, and this is what I like doing. Plus the ones that I grew indoors, yeah, they harmed, but they have zero seeds. I've been taking some of the buds off, the lower buds, just to double check, make sure there's no seeds and there's nothing. 
that and I'm out of bud, so I've been needing something to smoke on. Yeah, this is the end of week 13. This is a four by eight trellis. So as these girls start to come up and come through, they'll grow up just like this and they'll perk up. And hopefully, hopefully they don't max out the height because I know with the donut triploid, once it starts to flower, these things will fucking stretch. So all I can hope for is decent sized buds and a good grow. All right, guys. I'll see y'all in week 14. All right, guys, we're back with week 14 of these girls being outside. This is your donuts triploid right here. Yes, one single plant under a four by eight scrog. This girl looks absolutely amazing now. She's doing so much better since I've got her over here. So I did have her over there and the neighbor's lights on the garage right here, right there, were shining that way. So now that I've got her behind some of this brush, it's blocking most of the light. So you can see she's definitely doing a lot better. She definitely is or was overwatered because we just had Tropical Storm Debbie come through. And so for the last four days, we've had continuous rain. But you can see that these girls are starting to flower. Here's a donut. You can see, well, there's a f one or two pistols there. But you come over to the Skywalker and you can really tell that she's starting to flower. And look how big the Skywalker's gotten. So I'm still having an issue with the Skywalker as far as it leaves yellowing. And that right there looks like a little bit of powdery mildew. Really bad. So I'm gonna have to go through and clip these leaves off. Unfortunately, I may end up having to cut the plant down if it gets too bad. I mean, humidity's been out the ass in Virginia. I really don't wanna lose this plant. I'm definitely going to try and put some crop defender on her. Well, not try. I'm going to put crop defender on her. Hopefully, that will eliminate the powdery mildew because it does have a fungicide in it. So, yeah, these lower ones are definitely bad. I don't know, if the powdery mildew gets any worse, I might have to chop this one down. Hopefully not. Hopefully the humidity starts to fuck off here soon. All the leaves that are dead and dying underneath. So yeah, she's had a yellowing issue. So she'll yellow from the tip back and then the tip will start to curl. So I thought it was a nutrient lockout and it very well could be. Or it just could be the fact that she's been overwatered. But it's been so hot this year. I've been having to water these girls like twice a day. Because <clears throat> I water them in the morning. Then I'll come back out in the afternoon. And they'll be fine. Come back out in the evening. They're droopy. So to me, they need water. And you can see the PM right there. I don't know if the crop defender is going to help. But we're going to find out. Yeah, here's a good, better look at the leaf yellowing. So it's been doing that since she's been outside for the most part. I mean, she's been getting top dressed every four weeks. So I have no idea. I top dressed her three days before the tropical storm came through. Maybe it could have flushed most of those nutrients out. I have no idea. I don't think so. I can still see earthworm castings. This is the Donuts Triploid. Looks absolutely beautiful in this scrog. So this is, this is a four by eight scrog. So I decided to do something a little different, which I've never done before, which is an outdoor scrog. I'm not truly scrogging them. I'm just letting them grow up now. 
I know that once it hits full flower, they're going to stretch up quite a bit. Maybe, if I had to say, maybe to about right here. That's what I'm hoping for. And then that's it. You can definitely tell that she's starting to flower now. So I guess she was stuck in reveg for most of the most of the summer, which kind of sucks. It's a bummer because she could have been so much bigger. But I mean, I live in a city. I've got neighbors around me there, behind me, that side. So there's nothing else I can really do about the excessive light besides not grow outside, which I probably will do next year. Is not grow outside. I could put all kinds of tarpene or something to block the light up right here but then again the sun rises from this side so it would block the light for about a good four or five hours so i don't want to do that so i think next year i'm just i'm not going to grow anything outside unless i can get a privacy fence in time so i'm just coming through just picking off some of the older leaves a yellowing the donuts is yellowing but it doesn't have the same problem that the Skywalker does. God, that Skywalker's covered. Yeah, I'm definitely going to give her a little spritz with some Crop Defender. This sucks. I mean, even my regular garden hasn't done much this year. I mean, I've got, I've had 32 cucumbers, four squash, four tomatoes. The heat is killing them. The water from the rain is killing them. I mean, everyone's garden around here is being affected. So I've had already had heard people cutting down their their sea plants, their medicine, because of the excessive powdery mildew. So I don't know if this yellowing is from the excessive heat that we've had, because excessive heat will cause yellowing of the leaves or if it's a nutrient deficiency or a lockout that's the only thing i hate about growing and having an issue is sometimes it's easy to figure out sometimes it's not well, there's your skywalker og and your donuts triploid all right guys i'm gonna go ahead and cut this one here and i'll see y'all in week 16. oh and don't forget like comment and subscribe and i'll see y'all on the next one happy growing guys one thing I can do to help the Skywalker out is to go through and give her a decent defoliation. Open her up a little bit so she can get more airflow through herself. Because right now, that's one thing that could be contributing to the powdery mildew. Is lack of airflow coming through the plant. So I'm going to go through and I will defoliate her. And I'll get a good shot on camera. It'll probably be tomorrow when I do it. But that's the yellowing. That's just due to lack of light. But the leaves right here are getting plenty of light and still doing it so who knows as long as she produces some good bud that's all i'm more, that's all i care about and i can control the pm so check it out i'm out in the garage so sorry about the noise but i did do a slurry test of the soil in the skywalker og girl that's outside the ph is sitting at 6.2 that is extremely good but the parts per million is only at 350 so let me get that uh, PPM pin and I'll pull it right back up for you. 6.1 now. So here's the parts per million, 300. That is nothing. So I don't know if it's the ants that are eating the sugars because they do feed off the sugars within the soil and or a combination of the overwatering from the storm that pretty much washed most of the nutrients out. I know Gaia Green nutrients are dry amendments so they're not readily available. But if they're not even there, I mean, 300 parts per million, I'm going to have to give some of the uh, leafy green, leafy green, yeah, leafy green, give her some of this, since this is a water-soluble organic nutrient from Green Rush, and it's almost immediately available to the plant, kind of like a synthetic nutrient, but it's all organic. So I'm going to have to give some of this, and... Hopefully it fixes them, which it should. But 300 is just way too low for an outdoor plant, for any plant at this stage. And I mean, this stage of flower, yeah, it's still in the early stage, but still, I mean, you want to be around 400, 450 parts per million. 
maybe even 300 depending on the plant. But outdoors, no. Nah. I mean, I would even say you could safely go possibly six to 700 parts per million, dependent, like I said, depending on how hungry the plant is. So I know some of y'all are wondering what a slurry test is and how do you do it? Well, the slurry test is just simply taking a soil sample, mixing it with some water, straining out the big chunks, and then checking your parts per million and your pH. That's pretty much a slurry test. It's another, it's another way that you can check your soil's pH and, and uh, parts per million without having to take a sample from the runoff water. This is an outdoor plant, so you typically don't have runoff, and if you do, you don't catch it. So do your sample, just like I said, just dig down. This is where I found the ants at. So you dig down, I go about three inches down and I take uh, two to three scoops, put it in a cup, put some uh, distilled water in there with it and then stir it up and let it sit for about 15 to 30 minutes. And after that time I'll stir it again, let it sit for another five minutes. And then I'll go ahead and dip my pH pen in and my parts per million pen, my EC pen. That's pretty much a soil sample in a nutshell. Sorry, slurry test. And that's how you do it. To me, that's the most accurate way of checking your pH and your parts per million. To me, the runoff is not because you could have something or a chemical inside your drip pan and you may not know it. And it could uh, throw off the readings. So a slurry test to me in soil is the best way to go about checking everything, especially for outdoors. Now this is still week 14 and I went ahead and threw a trellis on the Skywalker OG girl. Right now, she pretty much has one top in every single square. That is exactly the kind of growth I was looking for. Now a little bit ago before I did put the trellis net on, I did do a little bit of a small defoliation. I pulled off some leaves from around the bottom and cleaned up the middle of them. So I did find a lot of leaves that looked like they were getting some necrosis on them because they are. Yeah, get this leaf, get a little bit on the tip right there. And you got some that are burning right there. And after doing the slurry test, I did find out that 300 parts per million is not enough. So I did give them a double dose of green rush. I gave four table, sorry, four teaspoons and yeah, four teaspoons of the grow and four teaspoons of the bloom from green rush mixed them together 50 50 since it is just starting flower and get fed that to them so that was a, around six uh, about six 650 parts per million and 300 parts per million that was already in the soil so you're looking at it close to a thousand parts per million now and that's exactly what they're going to need for flower so i'm gonna have to stay on top of that and monitor the soil to see if there's any guy green left that didn't get flushed out from the storm that we just had but i am really pleased with the way that she's turning out this year this is the donuts triploid filling herself out i haven't done any kind of defoliation but she's in the same boat so she had around 300 parts per million for as far as uh, any nutrients that still is left to break down. So I'm assuming the storm had did flush out most of the guy green. So I had to give her the same dosage that I gave her. So I fed them two and a half gallons each. But you can kind of see. The bottom starting to get some major yellowing on it. Here's a good shot too. There we go. So, just gotta stay on top of them now. This one does have a nice, pretty much level canopy. And I'm more than pleased with the way this donut's triple is turning out. And the Skywalker OG. Damn, too bad they've had issues. They, pro they probably could be 10 times bigger than what they are now. Maybe not 10 times, but at least three times bigger. Oh well, live and you learn. So, 
not worried about that. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and kill this one here. Don't forget, like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching, and happy growing. Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Easton Grows, and got to be a little quiet out here. It's, uh, of course, it's nighttime, and I am spraying these girls down with some Crop Defender. So I do have a one-gallon pump sprayer right here. And that's what I'm using. So the crop defender is a little on the concentrated side. So it only takes two tablespoons per gallon of water to make enough to last me three days. That's actually really good. So I'm not gonna argue with that. I'm trying to do this and talk to y'all and smoke a joint at the same time. Talk about some multitasking. This is all I'm doing is going through, spraying the leaves off trying to prevent powdery mildew and any kind of pests and these are in flower the early stages of flower so this won't hurt them this is really just essential oils so I will show you all the crop defender and what's in it and I'll also compare it to a couple other pest control And pest and fungicide controls that you can also use. But this is it. Just a little quick snippet of outdoor IPM. 